Hey guys, today I'm back with another review, and today it's going to be on the Razer Death Adder V3. This is the wired version that I have in front of me right now. Let's first start off with the actual specs of the mouse. The weight of the mouse is coming in at 59 grams, give or take. That's just their estimate on their website. As for switches, these are the Razer Optical Gen 3 switches, and the sensor is the Focus Pro. I believe this is just a rebranded Pixar 3350. And that is a Razer exclusive sensor at the moment. And then the main selling point of this mouse is that it goes up to 8000 Hz. But don't worry, you'll be able to use 1, 1K Hz and anything above that if your PC can't really handle 8000 Hz. And I'm just going to mention that it actually has a cable, of course. You'll probably need that for 8000 Hz. There isn't really any wireless 8000 Hz mice on the market. And then, of course, the crazy price of this mouse. Currently on Amazon US, it's currently sitting at $55. Now onto the quality of the mouse. The overall construction and build quality is absolutely perfect. There's absolutely no creaking or flexing anywhere on the shell. There's also basically no wobbling on the actual clicks. And there's also pretty much no post or pre-travel on any of the clicks, and that is including the side buttons. The mouse also does feature a new coating. This is the new coating that is featured on the Faker wireless Death Adder. To sum it up, it is a, it feels like a rubber, a soft rubber coating. It is pretty grippy. It's not going to be as grippy as a Vaxi or Zowie mouse. And it, of course, it doesn't really pick up that much sweat or grime like the coatings I have previously mentioned. They did improve the feeling of the scroll wheel. It does feel less loose and cheap feeling does have a nice tight scroll to it it's not the lightest it still has very defined steps but this is a nice change over the previous mouse scroll wheel that i had on the wireless version which felt pretty cheap especially for the price point that you're paying of course this does have a cable and as you can see it does retain its shape pretty well which is not a good thing actually it's also not the it's not the lightest cable as you can see it is pushing the mouse back the only reason it is this rigid is because it does have a metal jacket inside just to protect it from interference and stuff like that inside of a bungee this cable is pretty much not noticeable but it's like i said not the lightest so is that something to keep in mind the only thing that i can complain about in terms of quality is the clicks they don't feel the fullest they just, they just feel like they're missing something but don't get me wrong, they're also super tactile and they are pretty nice. Now onto the most important thing about this mouse and that's going to be the actual performance of it. The implementation of the sensor is really well done. But that is no surprise as Razer has always done super well with their sensor implementation. Like I mentioned earlier, this mouse does support pulling rates all the way up to 8000Hz. And after using this mouse for a good week, I can confidently say 8000Hz is not really worth it inside of wireless mice but in, on the other hand i can say that 8000 hertz wired mice are going to be going strong for a couple more years just till the wireless mice actually catch up to something like this as for how it feels tracking feels super smooth and stable while flicking and static scenarios or shots they feel just as good if i were playing on a 1000 hertz mouse so there's not really a big difference between this and a 1000 Hz mouse in those type of scenarios. Another thing to note is 8000 Hz does use a decent amount of CPU usage. So if you are someone with an older CPU or a slightly older or underpowered one, then this is not going to be the best choice for you. But if you do end up picking up this mouse and you realize 8000 Hz isn't working right, then you do have the option to go back to 4000 Hz or even down to 1000 Hz in the Razer Synapse software. As for shape, it's going to be the exact same thing as its wireless counterpart. The mouse is going to be best suited for claw and palm grip, and then it's going to be also best suited for medium to large hands. The mouse is usable with a fingertip grip, but just because of all the slopes and the grooves and the overall largeness of the mouse, it's not going to be the best experience for that type of grip. This is the current grip style I am using on this mouse. So it is a claw grip with a majority of the back of the mouse sitting in the lower portion of my palm. Just to note, my hand size is 16.5 by 9 centimeters, So it's definitely on the smaller side of things. And with the grip style 
and then the overall shape of the mouse i didn't notice any discomfort and it didn't really hinder my aim in games at all the biggest reason i can actually grip this mouse better than the wireless counterpart is because of that new coating i'm finding that i can grip this mouse way more confidently compared to a slippery coating on the wireless version i do highly recommend this mouse for a few reasons first of all it's going to be the price point it does come in at 55 dollars and for that price you get a really good build quality and you get a great shape and to top that off you have the option to go all the way to 8000 hertz of course if your pc can support that and for the price of the wireless version you can pick this mouse up and then you can pick up the new vaxi mouse bungee and to be honest i don't think you're going to be noticing noticing the cable with that type of setup anyways that's all for me if you guys did enjoy this video a like and sub would be much appreciated by the way i am running a giveaway that is in collaboration with lethal gaming gear and that's going to be running until next saturday so if you want a chance to win a new saturn mouse pad and some extra stuff do definitely check it out the link will be down in the description below but yeah see you all in the next one